747SP has been on schedule at every program milestone. Rollout in May of 1975 was followed on July 4th by first flight. cycling of the landing gear. All told, three hours and 15 minutes of tests were conducted on the first flight. Jack Waddell, chief test pilot for the 747SP, told about the results of that first flight. Well, this is by far the most ambitious first flight that we've ever undertaken, in that we uh, we cleared the airplane for what we call flutter or, or structural dynamics, clear up to the so-called uh, operating Mach number of the airplane. In other words, we've got it up to 92 Mach number. <coughs> and uh, it's very rare that you'll do uh, have the confidence to pull uh, complete full stalls in an airplane at this stage of the game as well. But, and our plan really was to, to uh, just approach stalls and uh, do the full stalls later. But it, they were so obviously uh, good that we just went ahead and did full stalls. Similarly, uh, we have never, I don't think anyone in the commercial airplane business before has ever attempted to do flutter clearance on the, the first flight of airplane. So we, the engineers and the manufacturing guys had a lot of confidence. I was just a little bit uh, questioning, but uh, after I got flying the airplane there, I found their confidence was more than justified. We liked it. The flight test program gained momentum as the first four production models were assigned to various flight test functions. Use of all four SPs in flight testing assured that the program would continue on schedule. Stalls are an important part of the flight test program. This maneuver establishes, under varying conditions, the lowest speed at which an airplane will continue to fly. One of the conditions that is altered and tested is weight. Barrels on the flight deck and in the lower hold are filled with water to establish the various gross weights at which the test will be performed. Another condition that must be investigated involves changes in the airplane's center of gravity. This is done by varying the location of empty or filled water barrels, thus altering the center of gravity. Another parameter that must be established is the effect of various flap settings during stall maneuvers. Test pilot Jack Waddell describes the results. As can be seen from this simulated Gandhi dance, the stall warning characteristics of the 747SP are outstanding, as are the other stalling characteristics as exhibited by that smooth nose pitch through there following full elevator application. The rolling characteristics during stalls are perfectly docile, and all the pilots who have participated in this type of testing agree that the all characteristics of the 747 are right out of the stability and control engineer's handbook. Every test flight has a specific area of investigation. There is a reason for every seemingly arbitrary action. The parameters established during flight testing determine future operation and use of the airplane and ensure flight safety.
Every maneuver performed during a flight test program has to be recorded and objectively evaluated. For this purpose, sensors are wired throughout the airplane to monitor the reaction of the SB to each test situation. Every strain, every flex, every action is carefully recorded. Both on the airplane and on the ground. These records are subjected to computer analysis, as well as human judgment, to determine if the airplane is performing as predicted. It is inevitable that there will be some variations from the exact criteria predicted for the airplane's performance. Finding and adjusting these deviations is one of the main functions of the flight test program. Objective evaluation is an important part of the test program, but it can't entirely replace the pilot's feel of the aeroplane. A major objective in the design of the 747 SP was that it flies so much like the basic 747 that little or no training would be required for pilots transitioning from one airplane to the other. This objective was met or exceeded in every single flying quality of the 747. Landing and takeoff. From a safety standpoint, the most critical part of a flight regime. In recognition of this fact, extensive flight testing is done in this area. A spectacular takeoff test, the minimum unstick speed, or VMU test. The purpose is to determine the lowest speed at which liftoff occurs. For these tests, a special tail skid is fitted to the airplane. The pilot will purposely over-rotate or pull up the airplane, resulting in the tail surface coming in contact with the runway. These tests showed that the ST could withstand a lot of inadvertent abuse. But even more important, the airplane was able to continue its takeoff. The ST was stable, lifted off cleanly. According to Jack Waddell, this sort of performance is reassuring to passenger and pilot alike. There are two major purposes in conducting these so-called BMU tests. One of the purposes is to demonstrate that under inadvertent abusive conditions, the airplane still will fly away safely. The 747 certainly demonstrates this very nicely with considerable margin. The other purpose, of course, is to provide the basis for the takeoff speed and distance parameters for the airline's performance handbook for the pilots. As far as performance is concerned, the SP met or exceeded all of the predictions that were expected of it. It handles well and it performs well. At the point of takeoff, what would be the consequence if an emergency occurred and the airplane had to be stopped? That's what RTOs, or refused takeoff tests, are meant to determine. It's a severe test of the airplane's braking system. RTOs must be performed with the airplane at various weights. Data from the test will establish actual stopping distances for the airplane. As pilot Jack Waddell explained, this is just a portion of the data required for takeoff certification. The rejected takeoff test is one of our more expensive tests at Boeing, in that the tires, brakes, and wheels are, in most cases, completely ruined. But it's also a very important test from the standpoint of, of safety. These tests are conducted 
without the use of thrust reversers, and of course represent the extreme condition that could be encountered under airline service. The 747 uh, SP brakes, wheels, and tires were very adequate for this test and showed considerable margin left over following the stop. This test is performed by driving up to D1 speed at maximum weight, extending the speed brakes, and then just standing on the brake pedals until the airplane comes to a stop. The anti-skid system protects from skids, and as you can see here, the brake torque remaining as judged by the flight verge of the airplane indicates there was plenty of braking action remaining. Following the taxi off the runway, the so-called fusible plugs do their job and let the air out of the tires without explosion. It rarely happens, not once in a million takeoffs, but it is possible to have an engine fader right after takeoff. It's important to know how the airplane handles during this kind of a condition. The concern expressed by test pilot Jack Waddell was recognized by the design team and is a part of the test program. In this test, as the ST lifts off, an engine shuts down. Airplane reaction is as predicted. There is no adverse change in attitude. The ST continues its steady, level climb. Knowing what to expect from the unexpected is another purpose of flight testing. Another series of tests that are made during takeoff are the high performance tests. The airplane heavily loaded. See how it would react. How much takeoff room is needed. Jack Waddell describes the airplane's reaction to these tests. These takeoff tests are done under a whole series of thrust to weight ratios. This is done in order to provide for the extreme cases such as uh, heavy weight out of Johannesburg on a hot summer day where the destination is perhaps London. The tests are conducted uh, simulating engine failures under the most uh, adverse conditions and under the regulations that this airplane is certified and tested to it performs with a great deal of safety margin and has the ability to take care of quite a wide range of piloting techniques and the most adverse possible ambient conditions. Because the ST is lighter than a regular 747, the design team was able to reduce the weight of the landing gear without affecting stopping distances. The SP displayed outstanding braking ability under all conditions and gross weight. All 747s, including the SP, are equipped with an anti-skid system. When brakes are applied, the brakes don't lock. Tests are conducted with the system in operation and with it in various failure modes and under both dry and wet conditions. It's a severe test procedure, but it does prove the safety of the ST when pushed beyond normal operating conditions. Test pilot Jack Waddell was in command during another important series of tests. These so-called performance landings, like the BMU tests, have two important functions. One of them is to prove the handling quality of the airplane during higher than normal sink rates during the approach and the action of the airplane during the maximum braking as, as it's applied right after touchdown and also to determine a baseline for the airline pilot handbook as far as fuel lengths are concerned the distances obtained during this kind of a test are multiplied by 167% and 
and thereby uh, the resulting distance is a very high margin for the operating airline pilot. Before actual flight, wind tunnel tests make it possible to predict how an airplane will perform. It is an educated guess based on computer analysis and years of accumulated experience. 98% of the time, the design predictions are accurate. Flight testing determines the minor fixes necessary for 100% accuracy. One area that is hard to predict precisely is airflow. It is also hard to test. Jack Waddell tells how some of the testing was done. The 747ST was shortened some 50 feet over the basic airplane. This resulted in an entirely changed tail section. It was important to check the flow characteristics over this tail section of the ST. Such things as a colored dye test and tufts were used for flow visualization and other devices such as the rotating rakes as you see here and the pressure belts were used to measure pressures throughout the entire tail section. Extensive tests of this type were conducted, and our conclusions are that the aerodynamic flow over the tail section of the 747SB agree very well with the wind tunnel and are as close to optimum as can be expected. Landing. Take off. Stall. The MU. Braking test. Approximately 700 hours of flight test, including a special worldwide demonstration flight, all designed to find out all there is to know about this aeroplane. Sometimes it seems as though the flight crew receives more than its share of attention. But we know, and everyone on the program knows, that all we do is prove that everyone else did their job. The parameters of performance were predicted. Now they've been proven. Proven in the only way an aeroplane can be proved, by flight test. Or as my old boss, Tex Johnson, used to say, one test is worth a thousand expert opinions. <laughs>